All right, you'll probably see that posted as a photo in a couple hours. Let me take a bet, they gon' know my name now. Yeah, we came a long way, but it's one way. Got a long way to go, like it's Monday. Someday, gotta be in LA. No, I gotta make it work out like chest day. Yeah, we just young and we live and we doing it right over here. Why you missing just me and my homies? We running the city, not worry about blowing these hundreds and fifties. Cause when you get caught up in money, it's fake. The happiest thoughts end up going to waste. I got all my people, they holding me down. They all coming with me when I got the crown. PR, how are you? How are you, Mike? Good to see you. All right, guys, let's get this started. All right, this is Chris from Ball Pythons 101. We're gonna cut a couple clutches today and show you how we do it. Let's get going. All right, so I actually wasn't expecting these to be ready. Probably, uh, I, I was going to plan to do this live egg cutting video on Monday, and I checked on this morning, and sure enough, I'm going to go ahead and cut this fan off right here. Sure enough, they're all pipped out, so I was kind of surprised. I think these are on day 55. This is a uh, pastel clown paired to... Firefly female. It's a uh, pastel fire, so we're looking for everything to be 100% het clown in here. 50% um, chance per egg at pastel. 50% chance. Actually, it's uh, more than a, I think it's a 66% chance at pastel per egg since both parents have the pastel. So, and then a uh, fire 50% chance. So, let's look at it. Hopefully, there's a lot of super flies in here. start with this one it's kind of weird uh, I've never really cut eggs without <laughs> pipping so yeah. like it's a little different this time with the head up in there so you know they, they uh, can't exactly get their head back in when you kind of touch them they're mm -hmm. kind of stuck in there so I guess I'll have to be extra careful not to cut necks and things like that We actually ran the same pairing last year. And I'll tell you what, before we cut these, let's go ahead and, and show a um, little shout out to the mom. Right here. This is the Firefly. Looks like she might be going in the shed. Probably not, maybe. Not sure. Um, and um, the sire is up here doing some work. He's actually locked up right now, so you know, we're not going to be able to see him. But, uh, alright, let's go ahead and cut these. I don't really know how this is going to go with uh, the head kind of stuck. Like that. Like, she's going to have a big old, like, <sighs> scarf on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we have it. 100% head clown. Beautiful. And uh, I guess we'll just let her figure that out with her nice big scarf that she has now. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's, you know, they don't make just one slit. We have the kind of the main slit here, probably had to head out before. And we got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost ten different uh, cuts on this egg, you know, from the snake itself. So that's quite interesting. We actually had, uh, she laid nine eggs. A um, little backstory on uh, this this female. So we we purchased her from Ace of Snakes. Uh, you all know Joe, super nice guy. He's actually not in business anymore. And uh, we picked her up. She was about two years old and she weighed about 900 grams. No, no, no. She was three years old and weighed 900 grams. And then within a six-month period, she shot up to like 1,800 grams and gave us a 9A clutch at four years old which kind of has me more on the fence of breeding females when they're about four years old now. Oh, three to four years old. I'm really not on the whole two-year team um, because she went the next year and gave us nine eggs again. So in two years, we got 18 eggs from her. So you could say the year we missed, the third year that we missed, we made up for that in the two bigger clutches after. So it's like could be six eggs per year and you're still like, you know, on pace even though you missed that first year by waiting the extra year. Of course, she decided that for us, you know, based off of her eating habits. Um, 
so you know it's quite interesting to, to see how the mature females handle the, the the load of eggs versus a young female another 100 percent head clown Oh, so she gave us nine eggs this year, and one egg, one egg did go bad in incubation. What was that about a weekend? Mm. One weekend. I think these scissors are getting dull. I said that on the last video. Well, we might just let that be. Looks like a beautiful pastel, pastel 100% head clown. You can see she has a couple slits here. I guess they just give up and go to another one. All right, I'm gonna go with Firefly on this one. A little comparison. Um, they look very similar, actually. I mean, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Is this a Firefly or is that a pastel? Firefly. They both look about the same. They could just both be very nice pastels. You know, and as a, a little reference, we can actually show. Um, full, this would be a full blooded, come over here and show them this. This is a 100%, she's getting a little tight in here. That's a firefly. Uh, looks like she's probably going in the shed. That is going to be a 100% full blooded sister from the same parents. There's a, there's another sister. Those are fireflies right there. And those are from the same identical pairing. So we ran the same pairing again this year. So we're gonna be cutting two clutches today. The other clutch is a pastel clown paired to the 50% possible het clown. A little backstory on her. I actually purchased her as a proven breeder a couple years ago from Metal Monkey Exotics. And he actually tried to prove her out and she did not prove out on, I think it was six or seven eggs. And you could easily miss them, them odds. I mean, I don't know how easy it is at 50% you know, per egg to be a visual, but at six or seven eggs, you could definitely miss on those odds. Yes, he was one of the attempts on the incubator. Uh, we incubate at about 89 degrees. It'll be maybe sometimes 90 on the, uh, look at this little guy coming out to see the show. There you go. Mm -hmm. Want to see your brother or sister? <laughs> All right, what we got here? Another firefly? Man, my hands are a mess. So is that blue from the ink that we put on there when we mark these? I don't even know if we marked this clutch. Okay, so I, I think this right here is a pastel. That is, you know, this might be a firefly too. I'm not, I remember last year when these hatched out, I wasn't the best at identifying the fireflies in the egg. It just, but once they come out and shed, it's quite easy. That one's just like, all right, let's do this. Join the party. Maybe we'll hit a superfly for uh, some comparison. Last year out of the 9A clutch, we hit one superfly and three fireflies. Okay, so this is probably the superfly. Yeah, that probably is just a pastel on that last one. Okay, so that's definitely not just a pastel. All right, final egg. We uh, clean the rats early this morning. Clean the carpet. Been busy all day. Yeah. Cook some food for the week. I'm wore out. 
Okay, so so I'm gonna go with I'm probably gonna butcher this. Obviously, these two were just hats, 100% hat clowns. This is a pastel hat clown. This is a firefly, 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 uh, pastel hat clown, and a superfly hat clown. I'm probably wrong on some of those, just like I was last year, but when they come out of the egg and after that first shed, you can for sure tell a whole lot easier. These will be out of the egg probably tomorrow. And I'm, I'm going to be doing live videos all week because I actually have another clutch. Um, pastel clown. Or no, no, it was leopard GHI to pa pastel seven eggs. I'm going to cut them probably on Tuesday. Um, and we'll show these out of the egg and we'll have a better idea at that. So we got one more clutch to go. Let's see if we prove that girl out. I think I saw one head pip pipping out and it wasn't a clown, so find out oops so we just uh we tried a little bit different method on setting up this egg tub and quite honestly we we didn't really do very well on setting this up uh, i'm just going to point out the flaws in this setup right now so so you have this gap right here is not good once these get out of the egg you're looking at snakes getting down here and drowning so i i would not recommend doing what we did here uh it just wasn't really thought out we just wanted to try the 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 water method with no perlite in there or anything like that. I mean, it, it turned out nice. It for sure turned out nice. Like, it, it, it worked out great. I mean, it's pretty hard to mess up eggs. Um, but we're going to get a, uh, we're going to design it. We're going to buy a different size tub that has more square, a square footprint. And we're going to cut the, uh, the light diffuser to kind of fill that out more tightly. And then we're going to put, I forget what it's called, but it's that stuff that people knit on to make designs. It's like a, a grid. It's like for crafts. And we're going to put that on top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to zip tie two PVC pipes laying on their side. And um, it'll just be a lot easier. So we're going to have to probably set these up differently so they don't mm -hmm. get down in here and drown. All right. All right. I don't see any clown heads, so... You know, at a minimum, everything's 100% hat clown. Uh, it was pastel clown to 50% possible hat clown. So, I question, don't... Question I have for you. Could you take that out now and remove all that water? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. That's probably what we'll do. Let's we'll probably just, do just dump the water out and, we'll, and then just set the eggs right, in there. With and get the rid paper of... towel in there. Yeah, I mean, that would be 100% fine. Because these, these, these bad boys are basically ready. Mm -hmm. Hi, world! Hi, Instagram. How are you? <laughs> it's just, I don't know. What does that remind you of? <laughs> it reminds me of like a mummy in a, can, in a coffin or something. I don't know. It looks weird. It's like, I want to come out, but I want to feel secure. Yeah. <laughs> Coming out of the shell. <laughs> All right. You'll probably see that posted as a photo in a couple hours. <laughs> I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching this, sharing this moment with us. All right, so we have a 100% heck clown here. Seems like just yesterday we was doing the live video when we uh, put these eggs in the incubator. You have a nice hat now, buddy. There's a pastel hat clown. So these pastels do kind of um, shed some light on the last clutch that those were actually fireflies. The, the fireflies really have a lot more color than these pastels did. Old pastel hut clown. And I am going to be making all of these pastel hut clowns available. I know most people would be interested in the females over the males. 
but uh, the females will be all made available. I just don't have the room to keep them all these days. Yeah, I think I'm gonna buy some new scissors. These are cuticle scissors, kind of pointed upward to prevent you from cutting the snake. struggling cutting these. Another pastel head clown. He's like, what's going on? Oh, and I don't know if uh, if anybody remembers, this would be a, a good a little trivia here, if anybody remembers what happened to these two eggs. When we, if anybody watched along with a live video, um, when I was peeling these eggs apart, I broke this egg. I think it was this one actually broke the egg and it started leaking uh, yolk fluid and uh, we just kind of left them together and they were they were kind of incubating like this on top of each other and it sealed itself off and yeah I would take a look in there once in a while and they, they did great so if you break an egg they'll still do fine in the incubator also I'm gonna go ahead and post this video on my story so it will be uh, visible for 24 hours if you guys want to go back and see it again. If you want to comment, give your business a shout out, you know, it'll be visible on uh, on my story for 24 hours. I'm sure a lot of people will watch it. So uh, appreciate you guys. Wow, look at the pattern on that one. Jeez, that's beautiful. I really like that reduced pattern on the tail. and I love them bands. So that one's not even breathing air yet. I probably shouldn't have cut that much off, but all good. What if it was a clown on the last egg? Prove her out. <laughs> and it's not. Pastel 100% had clowns, so she did not prove out, so we're going to mark her as a normal. And that's okay. I had a question of why you cut the eggs don't let them come out on their own. Uh, the reason we cut the eggs is kind of a two or three part answer. I guess the most ethical answer is they could get tangled in the umbilical cord. Uh, and believe it or not, we actually had that happen. Um, it was, uh, it was uh, on the same clutch last year. Not the same clutch, but the same pairing. Uh, one of the fireflies got tangled in the umbilical cord and we saved that snake's life by uh, pulling it out of there. And... Um, the other reasons are impatience. A lot of breeders just do it because they're simply impatient. They want the instant gratification. So they cut the eggs because they just can't wait to see like what was produced. I honestly think that's probably more the bigger reason people use the umbilical cord as the excuse. Um, these are all pipped out. Last year I cut all my eggs on day 50. This year I'm going with like when they pip or day 56, 57. Just uh, giving them more time. Mainly because the photos are a lot better of these eggs, uh, if you cut these on day 50, they kind of end up getting a little nasty and funky. So they're just not as photogenic out of the egg. Got anything to add today, Pops? Tell you what, I'm wore out today. Probably shows too. Yeah, we've been at it all day. Getting a lot done. Keeping on, keeping on. This one really pops. A lot of people would argue there was an enhancer gene in there or something Got crazy. The storage thing, yeah. So I guess that's about it. So we have a leopard GHI times pastel clutch due to be cut in a couple days. We should probably just peek in there and see if uh, they're pithy. We can just go ahead and cut them now. Um, oh yeah, so, so what we got to mm. do is we have to take these out and then we're going to dump that water. So, why don't we just do this? Yeah, sit them on that lid. All right, guys, don't get crazy and crawl out of them eggs yet. I'm leaving you unattended. I'm going, I'm going to watch them. You're going to watch them? Think I should put down a paper towel? Uh, yeah, that way you keep a little moisture in there. I think. If you think it's needed. Yeah, we'll do that. I, I would. Because... 
you don't want them. Like that yeah. one's not even breathing air yet. You, you so know, it definitely keeps some humidity in there, right? Yeah. We'll definitely do that. <laughs> what? Uh, who? That's uh, how's he pronounce that? It says, "Listen to pops." <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess they can have a little bit of my water. There you go, guys. <laughs> Share it. All right, guys, so I'm going to do my best to edit this as a YouTube video. I know I said it on the last one and it never happened. Just get busy sometimes and it doesn't happen. All right, so there we have it, guys. I appreciate you all tuning in. I'm going to be live a lot this week. I'm going to cut more eggs and we'll show these when they come out of the egg and all they're all cleaned up. So appreciate you all tuning in and we'll see you later. All right.